at the end of the session. All right, thank you, Joshua. I said I can hear you. We are in business now. <laughs> All right, so once again, my name is Victor Ogundele, and I welcome every one of us to Time Out with Victor. All right, on financial modeling and his business application with Project Finance uh, Model. So just to keep this in mind, uh, this is 100% free. Uh, we are not charging anyone uh, anything, and right, and it's more like my our own community contributions uh, to uh, to everyone's career. And uh, now uh, I've gone through a lot of uh, financial modeling training across different industry. Uh, trust me, um, right? I've been able to work on close to two hundred financial model uh, modeling projects across different industries. Trust me, globally. <laughs> and I've gone through. I don't know any financial modeling training you would have done that. I've, I've not gone through it. So I, I quite understand uh, what is being trained and then uh, what uh, is being applicable uh, when it comes to the real, uh, the real world of, of you applying financial modeling. And that's what we'll be dealing with today. As I said, uh, I have a client case study. I have a client case study. So please, uh, if you've registered, I'm quite sure you get a link to download a client's brief. So let's confirm if you have that. Confirm if you have that. If you have that, yes. So as I said, this will be more of hands on. Let's confirm if you have this. I'm also projecting that. I believe you can see my screen, right? Okay, yes. Let's confirm. You can just type yes in the chat box if you have it, or if uh, we need to reshare that in the in the chat. So after you registered, you see some of us did not read the confirmation <laughs> when you register for this session. So check your the confirmation you get from Zoom. There's a link. In fact, I think it's you have you already have the PDF attached to it, right? So check check at your hand so that you can download this and we can all be on the same page. Uh, now this is a real client case study. I won't lie to you. It's a real client case study. So uh, I'm not going to make this as more like a training or as if you are watching a, a, a training somewhere. Uh, I don't have any plan. There's no contents anywhere. In other, in other words, it means this model, we are going to build it from scratch. I'll be running you through the basic, the normal way I build a typical client model. So this is more hands-on, the client-based uh, case study. So you can read through. Right, uh, we'll come back to it. We're going to start from a blank Excel. We're going to create a template. As I said, this is a real client case study. The client sent this to me. Like, hey, guy, good. But uh, don't worry, I've removed some things and the client is aware that we are using some. So don't worry. <laughs> don't worry, right? I don't, I don't, I don't share clients' uh, data, but this is a real client case study, just an abstract from the client uh, brief. And this is what you are going to use. So please, in case you, uh, you've not downloaded this, kindly check this so that by the time we are going through it, we are all going through it together. So we'll come back to this, we'll come back to this. So once again, I say a very big welcome. Uh, let me switch off my video so that we can concentrate on the, the main screen. Right, right. All right. Financial modeling, let's take a look at some of the things we'll try and cover today. All right, so please, I want us to uh, be 100% focused. As I said, this will be recorded so that you can always go through this. Let's first understand the story behind financial modeling, how it all started, and then how, from financial modeling, how we incorporate it into business cycle and accounting cycle. And how do we now make use of this business cycle in creating a business concept? As I said, uh, I'm 100% going to assume, hey, I want to build a client's uh, project, and we are going to build it together. But then we now build, we get started with our uh, model build this will be more of a pro of a of a, of a finance project approach that's what we are going to use in building this model but before we get started let's take a look at some things why financial modeling and how did it start before you jump into anything uh one thing i always uh, advise my guys is try and take your time to understand what is the story behind this how was it formed? if you if, if it's easy for you to understand that trust me any concept being treated under it would be very, very easy for you. Trust me. Any concept being treated under it, you are just going to understand it. So it's as someone that wants to, uh, in English, right, you want to create a sentence, but you don't understand A, B, C, D. Definitely it will be difficult. The same thing when it comes to financial modeling. And just few institutions kind of teach financial modeling this way. So let's take a look at that. Now, 
I want you to understand that we have two approaches to financial uh, model. Different school of thought could uh, categorize it into different aspects, but just two. The first one is what we call a mechanical approach. And when we talk about mechanical approach, it's just you trying to understand how is business being run. The financial modeling has gone beyond you just putting values in Excel. Not many people can do that. But what if the numbers does not tie into any strategy? What if you don't understand how the business operates? Then, it be, then your model then become useless. So we try and mechanical aspect of it is you trying to understand business, understand how management think when it comes to business. What's the old concept around this financial modeling? Why is financial modeling very, very important when it comes to business decision nowadays? So the first approach is what we call the mechanical approach. You're trying to understand business, understand the industry. Then the second one is what we call the artistical part of it. Now, the artistical part of it is what most people teach. You go to Excel, you create one beautiful design, you put, you create the structure, right? Create Excel structure, uh, you create your model, components, inputs, calculation, and outputs. And you, you, you feel you are good with that. But the truth is, it really goes way beyond this. Just the artistical part of it, but understanding the mechanical part of it. And that will also guide you whenever you are requesting for assumptions from your clients. The truth is, most of when you want to build a model, your first source of data is from the client itself. Now, at times, the client might not understand the whole finance of the team. So it might be difficult for them to be able to supply you the right answer if you don't ask in the appropriate uh, manner. In line with that, we now have three S in financial modeling. That you as a sun modeler must always have that at the back of your mind. Now, the best way for you to be a good financial modeler is to understand it from the approach of back of the envelope. So there's something we call back of the envelope, which means from the perspective of the output, then you drive it into your input. If I want to forecast my profit or loss account, all I need to ask is, hey, this all the line item in my income statement. What are the drivers? I'll go to my revenue. If I want to forecast my revenue, what do I need? If I want to forecast this, what do I need? So from the output to the input. Now let's take a look at the three S. The first one is what we call story. Any model you are building that has no story, please just forget it. It's not a model. And whenever you hear anything like story, story is something you sit down and you plan. Right, and if you, if you if you like move if you watch movies a lot, you will realize that there's always a storyline that must connect. Can't jump from one to seven. No, you must jump from one to three to four. Then you see that, and the same thing in financial model. You must be able to play the story. How to play the business strategy? Hello, Victor. You faded out. I don't know if it's on my hand. Maybe I should just do with the headsets. Can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, quite better now. Okay, all right. Uh, well, I don't know. Seems to me my, my headset is, is acting funny. <laughs> okay, all right. So thank you for that. So now it's all about story. So the story must connect. And I said a very good example is this. You don't just say revenue will grow in isolation. Revenue does not go in isolation. For revenue to grow, there must be some strategies that will support that revenue growth. For example, maybe oh, there will be an increment in our capex. Going to invest more in our printing assets. Or maybe, oh, we are going to increase our marketing. Oh, the cost of sales will increase. So which means revenue does not grow in isolation. And you as a modeler, you also need to understand that. The story must always connect. Now, the second one is now what we call structure. Is what we call. So the first one story kind of comes from the mechanical part of it, right? Why the second one is a structure that comes from the artistical part of it. So you create a structure, make it look good. The story must also connect with the structure. Then 
The third one is scenarios. Based on our first standard, it's also saying whenever you are done with your model, your model should be tested, applying different scenarios. What if, what if, what if? What if our price, what if you can't sell up to this uh, quantity that we forecasted? How do we manage ourselves? What if this, what if that? So those are more like the question that your model must be able to answer. And in that stream, that is always good to incorporate different scenarios into your model. Now, with this understanding, let's even take a look at how it all started. As I said, it's all about story. And once you can pinpoint how it started, it will be very easy for you to understand the whole thing. Now, in the early days, and, and this is one thing I want you to understand as a financial modeler or financial analyst, uh, the world is, we are only involved in one thing. And this one thing started a long time ago. Now, let me, let me, let me give you a good, a good story part of it. Uh, let's assume I have, some, I have something in my compound and you also have something in your compound. Now, what you have in your compound, I don't have it. And what I have in my compound, you also don't have it. But I need what you have in your compound and you also need what I have in my compound. What do you think we need to do? So you have, let's say you have a resources in your own uh, apartments, right? Uh, so I have one in my own, uh, but you need what I have. You also need what, I need what you have. What do you think we need to do? So as I said, this will be very, very interactive. So we can always make use of the chat box. But what do you think we need to do? So you have something, I don't want, definitely we need to do what trade, we need to make that exchange. And that is what has been happening. And that is what we are even doing in the old world up to now. All is all about exchange. So it all started with trade by butter from the early days. Then they try as much as possible to now introduce a means of exchange. And we all started with our calories, our coins. Previously, they were using gold, something like that, right? But they had to take it to the next level and say, well, you know what? Let's create a means of doing that exchange, doing that transaction. And someone plays a value. So that's why you can hold a paper and you are telling me that, hey, this is a thousand dollars and it can buy this, it can buy that, it can buy that. It's just a means of exchange because I can take that thousand to the market and exchange it for something. It's all about trade by butter. Now, when this started, someone now said, you know what, let's even start documenting this. And that is when our accounting came into play. That, oh, for the transaction, as we are doing it, let's take our time and let's start recording this thing. So our bookkeeping came in, and thanks to our local Pasolo and the rest was history. Uh, we even got some um, uh, body that said, oh, you know what, let's certify people that can actually help us uh, do this book, uh, book recording, right? <laughs> and, and we started with our, our different uh, accounting, uh, accounting institution and, and the whole thing. Right? So Daniel, we can see your face, <laughs> you can see your face. Now from the accounting, there was also a need for us to develop our environment. Now, one uh, environment, we have more resources such that they can uh, uh, go to the other environment, right? Uh, capture them and be in control. And be in the control of their resources. And that is where taxation has to come into play. Now, oh, we need to start developing ourselves. And in developing that, if you have, then let's, you need to also contribute. Then our, our previous in our old, uh, olden days, right? They said one uh, state will go and conquer another state and they will tell them, hey, okay, we allow you guys to be living your normal life, but you need to be paying us homage, right? The whole concept of percent comes to play or court or tariff. Just more like the government trying to save in order to also do what? increase their power. This whole the fact that, so for a typical business, right? The whole concept of you paying taxes, government is saying, hey, we are allowing you to upgrade rights on our land. Now from those concepts, then uh, there was this guy called Brickley. So he has this um, knowledge of uh, tech, 
right? So then he, I think he went for his later PhD or so in finance. Then they gave them one assignment, and the assignment, let me give you an example of that assignment. So they said, oh, let's assume you have an investment in year zero, and you want to invest that into a business, and you are now considering different uh, uh, discounting rate, different order rates. Now, what if the uh, expected return is 20%, what if it is 10%, what if it's 15%? And they had them to do it manually. Now, the guy felt that was not efficient enough. So which means if you have 20 different scenarios, uh, rate of return is 10, is 15, is 20, is 25. That means you are going to have, let's say you have like five or 10, then you are going to create a cal different calculations 10 times. The guy felt, no, this, there's something better that can be done. Then he called on his friend, uh, Bob. He's more like a tech guy. And he explained the whole thing to Bob. That, hey, Bob, can we get something uh, such that we can have inputs? We just do our calculation once and we have our output. And all we need to do is change the input. Then your output will automatically cal calculate itself. Right? And that's the whole concept of model. Input, calculation, and output. And that was the whole thing that gave rise to the first spreadsheet. Call it this car, from this car, I think we moved to look at, so remember our computer story, right? And the, that was how we all started. That modeling is all about forecasting, looking into the future. But you don't want to, we try as much as possible to remove human input by incorporating some macroeconomic assumptions. And that's what we're also going to apply in this, our own uh, uh, hands on that we are going to build for our clients. And then that is from there, we now move straight to business cycle. And uh, as a modeler, uh, you really need to understand the business cycle because everything about business, all right, was created around this cycle. Now, let's take a look at it. It's all about business. And when it comes to business, uh, what one simple guy is the king above every other thing. Trust me, any type of business you are doing, this guy is a king. In fact, once you exhaust this guy, just go home in any business you are doing. And that guy is called cash and is the true measure of returns on any investment you do. Yes, we know we are accountants, we kind of like profitability, but when it comes to finance, cash is actually the means of return. So I'm telling you, oh, I'm going to give you 20% returns. If that 20% is not in cash or in form of something that can be converted into cash, then it, it, it's, it's not it. And the business also needs this. You want to start a business, you need cash. You want to be running your business, you need it. People that want to invest in your business, they need this as well in form of return. Dividend story is all about cash. And usually start with something, which you call operating assets. Irrespective of the business you do, you definitely need operating assets because that is what you use in generating revenue. Assets could be anything. Be current asset, not current asset. Asset is asset. As long as you are using it to generate more revenue. For a typical manufacturing firm, definitely you need their plant and equipment. They use that in doing the processing, convert that into what they are invented, their products that they sell. For a typical bank, right, then the, the, the cash is, is more like their own operating assets. The, the loans and advances they give out to people. Is the operating asset because that is what they use in generating more revenue. Now, you convert that to your operating assets, you use to generate revenue, you manage your cost, then you have your profitability stand. From that profit, you now convert that profit, you convert it into cash, which is more like the actual benefits and return that we are getting from the business. Now, as I said, cash is king. You don't just leave cash idle is either you reinvest it in your operating assets or you retain it in the business or you pay it out in form of dividends. Which means if a business wants to increase their revenue, definitely you must have, you must show that effect in your operating assets. One of the common things I usually see when people build models is you see that the company assets will be, will be depreciating. And by the end of the year five, the company has zero assets. It does not work like that. If you have, a, let's say, a manufacturing firm, you have a plant and equipment you are using in doing your production. You know, basically, they are saying, oh, this asset, year one is going to produce a thousand units for us. 
year two, 2000. And you're saying that same asset is depreciating. In reality, it simply means you are using, you are using up the assets. And as such, the asset is supposed to be supposed to be producing less, not increasing its capacity. So if you are now saying revenue will be increasing, definitely you are incurring some maintainable capex in keeping that asset in its best shape. So those are the, the kind of story that must always align whenever you are building your model. Now let's take a look at the role of accountants because it's very important. What we are doing is we are forecasting our three financial statements, right? And from there, we pick our uh, all, all the other data needed uh, in analyzing the project. So operating assets, or the part of accountants, they will help us report that in the balance sheet. A profit, you always see that in your profit or loss account, and your cash will be in your cash flow statement. Or the part of role of finance, also these three things. And the first one is our sources of funding. So finance is also focused on just three things, majorly. The best source of funding that will give us the optimized return. So they say, what is the best funding structure that we need to use? Do we need to use more of loan and less of equity, or do we need to balance it? Such that if we use this, what will be the benefit? If we use this, what will be the benefit? Right, then they, they start drawing our pecking order theory, right? Our, 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 <laughs> our structure as well. They also draw that out. Then the next one is market penetration. So they now create some different business strategies that can be applied such that we can. So whenever you are a company is saying we want to increase our revenue, basically you just want to take, want to gain more market share. By sell more, you increase your revenue, right? And, and you are gaining the market, market penetration. And then the third one is now the what the measure. Oh, after everything, after we've done everything, how do we measure the return? And that is the whole concept of cash. So we have our free cash flow that we need to create, right? We can time to create their own cash flow. But in the finance, we know, oh, you know what? Yes, accountants record their own cash as a cumulative, but we need to be able to what, get the, the actual cash we are getting yearly. So we go ahead and create our own free cash flow, which we use as a measure of valuing a business and also doing what's doing the investment viability analysis. And that's the whole story about the business. Now, let's now see how we flow this into our financial model. Let's assume we want to start a business concept today. The first thing you need to do is to do what? Do your visibility analysis. Do your market research. Identify some things that can affect your business as a whole. Is there a market for this? Now, once you're able to establish that, creating your business plan, your, um, your market research report and the whole thing, then you can now go ahead and get funding. Because you need cash. Would that be your own personal investment? Could be from loans or equity. And in getting that funding, you also need to consider the cost of financing that will not affect the business too much. And that's why our concept of moratorium period comes into play. And we use that more when it comes to project finance. Because you don't want to stress the business, you want to allow the business to run at its own pace. So concept of moratorium, we're also going to apply that in our model build. Then you now list how you plan to make use of the fund because of what? You need operating assets. All our capex, we must be able to state that. Now, business does not start today and start generating money today. In other words, you also need some working cash. You need to employ people, right? Start paying them till the business can generate enough cash on its own. Then you go straight to the part of the business operation. Business model, you, have, you would have also created that while doing your visibility study. So how will the business be generating revenue or what are the costs attached to this? Then you go straight to the part of your profits and the profit now shows how efficiently we've managed our resources. And then we now turn that to what? To cash, which form a base for evaluating the investment. This is how it flows into financial model. And for our own model that we are going to do, let's take a look at it. Take a look at the markets, research, recognize some factors that can affect the business. We go straight into getting our financing, 
or investment. And from there, we start with our operating assets. So how do we plan to make use of the fund? Uh, what are the operating assets, the business we have? And then we make assumption for our working cash that we need to do the first three months uh, operating expenses. We need to do what? We need to be able to include that. And then the business starts operations, revenue, the money, their costs, they have their profits, and they convert the profits back into what? Into cash, the cash into the operating assets. And that's this is the whole thing about financial model. Because we are taking a look at the future in order to make some informed decision. Now, for this, our own model, right? Our business model and our business canvas. So the next thing is we take a look at the questionnaire that well, we've sent to our clients and they do that for us. So we get started with our general macroeconomic assumptions and then financing assumptions. How do we plan to make use of the funding that we are getting? Working capital and the operational cost, revenue and our cost, then go straight into the calculation, output and analysis. Now, uh, there is no, uh, uh, I'm not sure there's any standard saying you must always start with this, you must always start with that. But as I said, we just want to create that story and let it flow with the typical way a business operates. So if you want to start your own model, yes, you can start with revenue assumption, you can start with capex assumption, financing assumption, but for our own, uh, we just want to create that story so that it flows very well. So keep that in mind. So now let's go ahead and let's create our business concepts. And I'm, I'll go ahead and let me open our brief that we share with our clients. So please, in case you have any question, you can always type in the chat box. Uh, I believe we are all experienced modelers so that we can also have that discussion. It's very, very interactive, trust me. Right, so now let's go through this. Let's go through this. So is there any question on what we've done so far before we get started with our model build from scratch? So you can type in the chat box uh, as well. I think, yeah, that, that would be fine. So if you need beef to unmute your mic, we can also do that. Any question, any question, any question? All right, so now let's take a look at our business case study. As I said, uh, this is more like a, a, a work brief that was sent to our client. So in case you don't uh, know how to create a questionnaire or a client's brief, you can check my YouTube channel, uh, Victor Bundeli. I had some session. Um, where we kind of created a sample one, the whole thinking behind that. So you can also check that uh, for you to, to understand that. So now, remember our structure that we want to apply, right? Which is this. So our business model and our business canvas. So describe, so project overview, let's first understand what the project is all about. And the same, describe the purpose of the financial model and how many years will the model cover? So they're telling us this model is to serve as a strategic plan and fundraising. The forecast will be for 10 year period. So it's also good to understand who are the final uh, recipients of the model. So saying, hey, owners of the business, investors, and financing institution. So that you know that oh, we must have these metrics, we must have these metrics. And it's always good as said, list all the necessary metrics you need the model to provide. So this is also good. Right, and it just gives you uh, from the uh, from the what from the back of the envelope approach, right? You try and understand from this output, uh, so so you don't be the model and the model and they are doing the presentation and they just ask you, oh, what is the uh, expected return on the assets? I need to tell them that oh wait wait wait, wait let me go ahead and, and do that. You don't want to do that in front of your of your clients, right? So you must just try and establish that. So here, ratios and profits margin, NPV, IRR, so net present value. And uh, okay, uh, NPV, our higher up, right? Uh, uh, payback period, uh, P, uh, break even points, right? And our debt service coverage ratios. Then we have some returns uh, return on equity, return on investment, uh, return on assets, and our uh, return on equity uh, employed. Now, understanding the business goods, describe your business and the services uh, or products you uh, you'll be uh, doing, right? So they said they want to be a manufacturing of uh, LD juice drink for household consumption. Right, more like what is our, our, our drinks, right? And then what will be the size size of packaging, uh, 250 ml per bottle, and they plan the selling to distributors and supermarkets. Then do you have a draft or your goods? 
for the side, oh, this is to guide the business in making this plan. So this model will also uh, help them in join out their plan. So have you identified your strengths, weakness, opportunities? So you just like you trying to get an uh, overview of the whole business, right? Said, yes, we have done the visibility research. So what business model are you undertaking for your business? Say, oh, business to business, which means the firm will sell directly to wholesalers, distributor who will turn send to the last uh, customer. Yeah, what are the expected construction period and business operation? Because this is more like a manufacturing firm. So which means you are setting up a manufacturing firm. Uh, it's not that you start your business today and the plant will be ready tomorrow. So which means you need a timeline. Oh, if you take all this number of period to, to record that, uh, I think we have three uh, timing, right? Or the first one is where you are trying to uh, have your financing, uh, your financing uh, uh, conversation. Right, so creating the business model and the thing we assume the business that started when it comes to a project finance. So for you to go through the process of getting your financing, then you now start with your construction, then the construction period before you now start. So you could also have some delay period, and then before you now have your what you have your operation period as well. So here they're telling us that hey, it will take them uh 12 months, which is more like a year, for them to set up the, the factory and the old equipment. They said the operation period will be for 10. Yes. What industry uh, does a business fall into? They're telling us it is the manufacturing firm. So now, the project part of it, understanding the project. So they're telling us that how much investment do you want to raise? 200 million. At times, uh, you might need to build a model uh, before you can uh, ascertain that. But uh, you know what? We try and keep things simple, right? Just like introduction to project finance. So we won't, be, we won't go to the complex part of it. But once you understand the, the basic part of it, trust me, you will be good. When it comes to the other part of it. So, what is the funding plan for short and long term period? They said loans and debt, 70% of capital will be raised from loans, while 30% of capital will be in the form of shareholders' equity. Do you expect to raise further funding investment after this? They said no for now. I always discuss that later after this piece. So, if it is loan, what period? Uh, what is the period of the loan inflow? They said it will be coming in in year 2022, right? What is the interest rate? They've given us the interest rate. What is the repayment period? So the repayment period will be five years, but they're going to have a moratorium period of two years. So this is always more like two approaches, uh, depends on the agreement, but I think the basic way they usually do it. So if you're saying your repayment will be for five years and your moratorium period will be three years. So that means your interest rate would be accrued. Then you start the payment from year three, which means you're going to repay everything uh, over three years. So that's one, uh, there could be some other approach where they say, you know, moratorium will be three years, but we're still going to repay everything over uh, five years. So that would make the loan seven years. But at times, they usually include the moratorium period in the, uh, the loan period itself. So evident payout ratio, they're telling us that at 40. So provide a detailed breakdown of how the company intends to use the capital to be raised. Business registration of 1 million, a factory, 80 million, a fittings, 20 million, a vehicles, uh, stock and inventory, your, their marketing, creating awareness, and the working capital, right? Working cash, more like a three month uh, operational expenses. So, what's the plan for the investment in the business, right? We hope to have expansion in year five to other parts of the, uh, I think that should be states, right? Now, understanding the business operation, provide a brief description of what your daily operations would look like. So, say, oh, distribution of finished product to uh, respective uh, selling points, right? And then what is your plan for staffing? So we need to understand the amount of resources, right? Our manager is giving us the salary, financial controller, or sales and marketing, operational and admin, factory workers and other staff. How will the business be generating revenue? So they're telling us, oh, true sales of LD juice drink of 250 ml pack, which means 12 pieces in a pack. Then kindly list your product services and their respective pricing. So LD Juice 250, they said the price is expected to be 1,850 uh, Naira per pack. So sorry, we are, we are using our, our own local currency here, here, right? Business will be set up in Nigeria, that's why. Okay, so at start, so they said, what are your product or service pricing strategy and expected pricing goods? So said at start, we might sell at lower price and increase it as we gain the customer trust which is part of a normal business strategy for a startup. What are the direct costs attributable to each price per unit of volume? So they said, oh, 
price uh, raw materials they've given us, so they've given us the price per pack. They also help us in getting the cost per pack as well. So raw material, packaging, utility, and some other direct costs, they've listed that for us. Uh, what are the expected volumes or quantity units to be sold at each period and the expected unit growth? And what is the business capacity uh, on production per period? This is also very important because if the company now has the capacity production of uh, 10,000 and you, you are projecting 15,000, definitely uh, that is not possible. So those are things we also consider. So 35,000 parts monthly, uh, capacity production is 8,000 parts monthly. So which means we have a constraint unless they plan on increasing that uh, capacity. Now, list out your expenses, utilities, office, uh, supplies, maintenance, logistics, and other costs. So, said, oh, can you provide a draft projection of what sales would look like? This is also always good, right? Your, your client might have done some uh, workings and they already have uh, expectation of some figures in their head. So, it's always good you, you try and get that. So, they said, oh, help with this. So, this is all we've gotten from our clients. And we need to build a standard model for them using this. So now let me ask us, now that we've gotten the brief from our clients, what do you think would be the next thing that we need to do? Anyone, what do you think would be the next thing that we need to do? Anyone, what do you think will be the next thing that we need to do? We need to think of the story, right? Oh, yes, I we already have the story, right? <laughs> we already have the story. We already have the story. So I think, yes, structure, 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 structure. So, uh, which means uh, we get started with a blank Excel. Let's build our model structure. And now, uh, because of time, so this is what we are going to do. I would just want, I would like us to uh, focus on uh, what I will be doing, right? Uh, in case you have any question, ask. And when we are done, I will share the recording with everyone. Yes, trust me. I also upload it on my YouTube channel so that you can always go there. I use that to also use it your own. Let's get started with our um, model. As I said, I'm assuming this is a client. This is a model I was, I'm going to. Uh, okay, so if you need the slide, slide, slide. You can get. The, you can watch the video recording, <laughs> right? So let's get started with our. Okay, yes, uh, Abraham. Yeah, is up. yeah with the, this is out to ask about the operating years, which is 10 years. I mean, uh, is it like the company will stop operating after 10 years? Because I expect the company to be a good concern. That's one question. Exactly. I love that question, right? Uh, so uh, for a typical business, when, when it comes to normal pro, uh, normal financial, model, we usually say, well, if you just limit it to five years, and uh, the whole thing is because uh, most macroeconomic data assumption that we use in our model, all right, you can only get up to a forecast of five years. But for a typical project finance, you have two approaches. Number one, yes, we know it's expected to be more like a going concern, right? Uh, but, but we always like to keep it uh, short. So for a project finance, is either you use the lifetime of the project itself. As I said, this one will be more of a mixture of normal, uh, or normal corporate model and a project fee now. So that, that's why. So let's just keep it to 10 years. By the time they get to 10 years or year five, they might want to ask the model. And based on our first standard, I say, hey, when you build a model, it should be flexible such that it can be extended over a period of time. Yes. So it's not as if you have one standard and say, hey, it must build it over 10 years, uh, five years. Okay. Okay. This. So you spoke about uh, uh, using the past standard earlier on. So I, I got intrigued. So I just wanted to ask if we're going to be adopting the past standard for the uh, design and structure of the model. Okay, uh, uh, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, uh, the truth is, uh, even before standard, uh, uh, what, if, if you are good with uh, business presentation, right? Uh, I know there are different standards uh, uh, when it comes to financial modeling, but the truth is all the standards are actually saying the same thing. Uh, if you go through it, uh, uh, we are going to uh, be applying our past standard, but past standard being aside, uh, our business communication uh, standard, we, we also try and apply that in the structure of our model. 
And the truth is, you can always be creative when it comes to you building your module templates. Structure it, but just make sure it is transparent. Anyone it is flexible. Anyone can pick the model, uh, update it, or understand what you've done. Uh, that, that's more like the main thing when it comes to that. Okay, all right. So uh, as I said, practical. I'm assuming, yes, I'm, I'm building this for a client. So before we get started, I need to first create my uh, model templates. Now, when you build your model templates, uh, it is always good you set it uh, to a printable format, such that uh, after the uh, after you are done with the model, you can just press Control P and print the whole thing, right? Not most uh, most of our, uh, our users, most of them might not have time going through the Excel of the thing, so they might they might like having it in a uh, in a printed format, maybe PDF, such that they can go through it. It's easier for them to, to run with that as compared to them going to Excel. But not everyone uh, can use Excel, right? We also need to understand that. So what, we, what one thing I usually do is I'll create one sheet first. And on that one sheet, I'm going to, I'll go to my page layout. So let me try and zoom out. To my page layout and under my page layout you can see this is where you can set your model to uh, a printable format now i have this uh, drop down option here and i'll just click on it once i click on it so which means in excel if you once you see this drop down option it's basically telling that hey you have in case you uh, anything you are looking for you can't find it here Click on this drop down option and you can see more. So don't see what you are looking for. Check out the full set of page. So I'll just click on it and here I have it. So you have a many tab uh, page, you have margins, right? You have headings and you also have sheets, right? So click on the page. Uh, I would like to set it to portraits. I like portraits and I will fit it into. So instead of I just 200, I'll select the fit to one page. The white, I'll just delete it and I'll not put anything there. I'll go to the second one, margin. I can still leave the margin the way it is. Uh, headers and footer. So maybe by the time uh, they are printing that, you always want your year to always be constant across all the pages. So, um, uh, okay, so, so uh, okay, I think that should be on that sheet, right? So rows to repeat at the top. By the time they print that out, those uh, headings that you've printed, name and the other thing can be constant. So I'll click on this row to repeat at the top and I will highlight, I think from one to, one to six should be okay for us, right? Anything we put there should. So one to six, I can go back to my header and footer because I want to customize some things. So uh, under the, to the headers, but custom footer. So if I want something to be at the left corner section, so like I said, um, I can type printed on, then I can select. So you have time printed on the date, uh, then art, then select the time. I can just, just you just being creative on this right corner side, I can put page, uh, page uh, number, page number, right? Page number uh, of the pages. Then in the middle, because I just want to put the worksheet, the worksheet, the sheet name, right? And I can click on OK, right? And I can click on OK. So which means I've created this. Now I can duplicate, I can just duplicate this uh, sheet one that I've created that uh, printable uh, page setup on. Because if I create another one, if I, add, if I click on add worksheets, new sheets, that means I'll still need to go back and do that stress again. So let me just create one, duplicate that. So here, I'm going to call this my cover page. So let me just call this my cover page. Let me call this cover. Right here, let me also duplicate this. So this one, I'm going to call it a guide. So part of the financial modeling standard is saying, hey, whenever you create your model, you should always put a guide and I just, your users can take a look at that and understand it. So this one, uh, maybe I just call this one sample for now. So my cover, I'll just keep things simple. So what name can we give our, our model? What names can we give our projects? My screen is hanging. Uh, I hope it's not at your hand, uh, Isaac. My screen is skipping. Okay, maybe it's at your end, maybe your network. I think it's fine as my hand here. Okay, so, okay, um, Adikola has given us a name. <laughs> Cheap production um, model. Okay, so I'll, let me start. So I'm going to start from this, our guide, right? From this, our guide. 
And I'm going to collapse these three columns. And the reason why I'm collapsing these three columns is for us to be able to create a good, uh, a good outline. We're going to see that. So here, I'm going to call this uh, model information. Model information, right? Um, so I'm just put this. So I want this to always be in heading one. Now, there's something we call self style in Excel. But we'll, we'll come back to that. So this one, let me just put it in something like a blue color. Right, make it bold and just put it in times 12. And I can just write some things. So, um, uh, so let me say, just creating some, make it just make it look good and professional. Uh, so, this uh, this section, um, this details, uh, details, or uh, details or information uh, about the model or the project. So, you can always be creative with your own, right? So I can reduce the font, maybe something to 10 or 9, right? Change the color to something like ash color. So first thing, let me put my company name. What's that? Oh, we can even call it project name or company. Uh, so that'll be two. Let me reduce this column E and here. And now, so someone has given us a name. Uh, what name uh, do you suggested for us? Or what name did you suggest for us? Uh, can you type that again? I think we had one. Okay, cheap, cheap production model. That does not sound like a company name. <laughs> like a company name, a company name. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Okay, light juice, light juice. Okay, good. So I think that would be fine. So light uh, juice, right? Maybe um, limited or, or which one? Okay, light juice limited. Okay, so let's put it in the let's put it in the <laughs> Let's put it in the so it looks more like a good company, complete company. So now I'm going to rename this and I'll just call it. I'll go to my name box, click on this. Currently now, uh, each cell in Excel has uh, an address. So this one is saying I'm in cell F4. I'll click on it and I'll just type my name. So let me just call it C O Y, which is co company, C O Y, right? So let's say uh, industry. Industries more like a manufacturing, like a manufacturing. Uh, so, so let's let's start with that. Okay, so um, let's let's make this let's make this dynamic, right? So let me create another row here, and let me call this. Um, okay, let's call this company information. So let me call this company information. Let me put that in so something like red. That looks good, right? Company information. So uh, let's have our location as well. So currency uh, this will be set up in Nigeria, and the currency, the currency, the currency, and that should also be in here, right? So NGN. Let's just put that as NGN. Oh, we can put just another way. Let me go to my insert. Let me put my Nera currency and under my symbol, um, this is my symbol. I think I have Nera currency here. Insert, close, and then I can just put it that way. So Nera currency. Then, um, so maybe model version. So version 1.01. So uh, model builder. We build the model. So um, just call this uh, timer to speak to. Uh, boot camp. Boot camp, right? So the next one, uh, let's have our timing. So let's call this one uh, timing, right? Um, so model starts. So let's call this our model starts start date. So I'll just put uh, 01 uh, 01 2023. So as long as when this will be starting. All right. So let me format this to date. Okay, my shortcut seems not to be working. Okay, let me take a look at that. So let me just format that. Um, I don't know, it seems my system is acting for me today. So let me go to my custom and let me customize that under my gates so that I have it the way I want it. Okay, so I think this is fine. This is fine, good. Right, so uh, model forecast 
as period. So that will be for uh, 10 years. So I just format that as a show the years behind it. Show this. I'll show the years at the end. The end of it. Yeah. I can use that. But now that I have this, I just use this to create my cover page. So my cover page, I just type equal to my company, Intel. So let me just increase it. Let me increase this company, right? So my industry you can also link that. You also rename it, but let's just let's just do the linking manufacturing. So this and just me just being creative. You know, <laughs> you know most you do you do all this when you are building your home. It's always good manufacturing. So um, and then you put the industry here. So let's look at the what the business will be doing. Right, so manufacturing of uh, as uh, LD this, so I'll copy that and I can just put that one here. So paste it and just put something like ash color, just making it look good. So the manufacturing and the location will also be in Nigeria. So we could also call this a model objective, so that anyone can open the model and understand it. So fund, fundraising. And um and what and strategic strat uh so okay strategic strategic uh, workforce right then you can just add some fancy all right all right research uh at maybe the company is uh, light juice uh, limited what okay let's really that's just this we can just have this as our cover so in case we want to add some other things we can always come so i don't like having this grid line you can go to your view uh untick the grid line if you know the shortcuts you can also apply that so let me just have this you can put some shape so just you trying to, to make things look good just put it like this i will remove the few no fill a shape outline you can just change that one to something like ash so it looks good like this you can even hide all this uh, alphabet right so uh, switch up the edits so that it looks like this so when they open this this is the first thing they'll see so uh, manufacturing uh, let's change the font color come from nigeria a model objective also be good so just have it like this right straightforward now let's go back to our guide let's go back to our guide so we've created our model information uh, so the next one is let's create our model uh so i'm just going to copy this format that i've created here i will paste it here and here i'm going to call this our model navigation navigation so uh this section um this section section uh, gives uh, what's what can we call this one uh give Is a guide to understanding understanding data in the model. Let's try and create that, right? So let me zoom out so that we can all see my screen very well. So now we are going to call this our style guide. So we call this style guide. So let me just copy. Let me work smart. Let me copy this format and let me put it here. Now, when you are building your model, it's always good. Apart from a standard scene, when you build your model. Uh, all the data in your model must have a clean and clear uh, description such that someone can take the model, understand what you've done, right? Uh, it also makes you work faster as well. So here, we're going to have some different styles. So inputs, we're going to have our input cell styles. So input cells. We're also going to have our uh, link cell styles, link cells, and we're also going to have our formula, formula cells. So some other style that we could have as well, unit cells, Right, um, unit cells. I think we could also have some percentage. All those, all those are generic, so let, don't let's uh, put too much. So, okay, we can have a subtotal, subtotal cells, right? We could also have our, our total cells. So, as I said, the recording will be shared with everyone so that you can uh, use this to build your own as well. And then you can have our editing, uh, editing, 
right? Heading one, then we have our heading two. So let's create a sample, sample of it. So one, two, three, four, five, just to give it. All right. So if you look through in your model, so it's more like you preformatting your your model, preformatting your Excel, such that whenever you need that style, you don't need to be doing it one after the other. We also make it very easy for you to update going forward. And this your style will actually help you do that. So instead of you going through, let's assume, hey, we want to create our input. Uh, Want it to be in blue color, one faded few. Instead of going through this, I can just preformat it once. So here I have an input. I can modify it. Right click on it, click on modify. Then it will show me this more, something like this tab. And I can click on this, my format. Create this format, right? And then anything I want to do, I can do it from here. So, but before I do that, now look at this. If I type one, two, one, two, three, four, five in my mode in this Excel, it seems not to be giving me in the comma, and I would have loved to see it like this. So instead of every time I type this one, two, three, I need to go to this guy and do it. I can just change this by default. This will always be on the normal. So which means I will right click on my normal, click on modify, format. So let's look at what do I need? I only need the number. So I want to take these other ones. This is my number, click on format. Then I can just customize this to what I have, what I need, right? So uh, one, I believe we all know about formatting, right? So, then I can put this the way I want it uh, so that I don't need to, uh, every time I type, I don't need to be doing that. So I'll click on okay and okay. And that will be applied to it. Anyway, I go into this worksheet, if I type one, two, three, four, five, it automatically give me in that, format that I've created. And that's one usefulness of our style guide. So now this cell star inputs, right click, i modify that. Things I need, I think I only need a font color. I want the color to be uh, blue. Uh, border, I think I will need border, a few shaders. So I just click on format. For my font, I want it to be something uh, blue color. Let me just pick this blue. I think this blue is fine. For which one? Okay, we should be use this. Let's try and see, or oh, let's check the more color. And I have to have black blue, which I think this will be fine for it. For the border, ash is good. Let me put that, so I think that ash will work fine. The few parts, so in case you don't know much about this cell referencing, you can also check my YouTube channel. I have some uh, Excel record reading that I did on this. So let me increase, so I want it to be filled with some faded blue, okay. Now click on my OK, right, and click on OK. So I can go to my cell star and just select the input. And you see automatically it will format to apply everything that I've done. So here, link cell star, uh, link cell star. I think our standard is also saying we should put that in red. Uh, so I will also modify the link cell star, or we create our own. You see this new cell star. So we click on the new cell star. We'll call this linked, linked cells, right? Things we need, I think we don't need number alignment font, we need font, we need border, so we don't need protection. I'll click on format. I'll go to my uh, font. I want it to be in red. Red, the border. So I also want the border to be more like this uh, dotted line around it. Right? So you can be creative with your own. The few, uh, there should be no few. We don't need any few. I'll click on OK. I'll switch up the few since I don't need few. Then cell stars, you see the one you created will show up here. Link cell stars. Formula, one, two, three, four, five, should just be the same way we've created it. So for our units, let's say for that currency that we created, so maybe uh, we'll send uh, our Naira, then in thousand. So let's put this in this, right? Now let's create our uh, that format. So units, uh, just click on, let's look at, let's look for, okay, this explanatory is good. I will modify it. Format, the font should be 10, I think 10 is good. The font color should be something uh, ash, right? I think that's the only thing we need. Order, regular, click on OK and OK. So if I apply this, so you automatically always show in this format, right? So I was not in the third zero. Okay, so subtotal, one, two, three, four, five, you can also create that. Uh, so for subtotal, you create that or just use anyone. I think let's also create that. Uh, new cell style, 
So uh, yes, at start, it might seem as if it's taking your time, but once you've created it, you're, you, and you're building your model, you need to do is just to be applying it. So for this one, I just got my format. Uh, I think I will need border. Border is more like what we need for this one. And uh, I think, yes, just click on this part. That's what I need. Only need border at the top. Only the font should be really bold because it's up to top. I think that's the only thing we need. So border fill, so click on OK. Uh, we don't need shading, we don't need protection, click on OK. So if I apply that, this, so I do not even rename it, so right click, I uh, can modify it and rename it to subtotal. OK, then click on the cell style to apply that. It shows like this. So for the one that's a subtotal, cell style, I can just modify this total. Let's modify this total. I think the border is only what we change there so that the border is more like um, black, right? Top one or the double one, select that down and the font should be bold as well. And I click on our okay, that's okay. So when we apply this to our cell stars, we know we've created that. So for our heading one, now it's more like type two, type two, type two, right? And align it to the to my right. So for the heading one, I can modify this. And just modify this, format it. I think the color should just something like blue. 14 is too much, maybe 14, right? Our border, do we really need border? Let's let's use border. So let's select a light border for that and click on OK. And OK, then we can apply that. So heading one, we always do like this. Our uh, heading two, uh, let's also modify this or modify this. So this could be a lot of work at the start, but once you've created this, uh, you are good. So I think red should be fine for this. The normal line, red. And the font shape should be red. Just give us red. All right, and I think that's all we need there. Click on my okay, my cell style so I can apply the heading two. Now, we could also put some description of what they are saying. So explanatory, so I'll select my uh, explanatory notes. So here, the first one, which is our input cell, is saying just put uh, maybe uh, data in the cells can be modified, can be modified or, or changed either, either way, right? Can be changed. Then cells, so just say uh, data uh, gotten from, so from another cell or worksheets. So this is always good so that someone can just take this. Please, we need the run to use the built-in star. So you can use that. Yes, if, if you like the color, if you like the color, I just I just feel like <laughs> I usually like to have it the way I want. So that's why they also they're giving you that room to always modify it. So formulas, right? So uh, results, so just just description. So results of um, of functions of formula of formula. Then unit cell, so just say uh, gives uh, gives description, right? Give descriptions uh, to rows or column column uh, data. Then subtotal, right? Is just a summation of the summation of uh, of the parts of rows or columns, either either ways. Right, and then this one, let's just say this would be a summation, a summation of a row or column uh, array series of, right? So this one just saying um, a section, so section, section headings. And this second one, we just call this one subsection, subsection uh, edits, edits, and we have that. Right, then the third one, which you can say, let me just create this. I can just call this one our uh, more like uh, model uh, audit and glossary. So put that one here. So model, model uh, glossary, model glossary um, and, uh, and audit, right? So this section, this section I will give um, explanation, explanation to, uh, abbreviated, abbreviated, um, right, abbreviated uh, words in the model. 
the models just have like a, a dictionary, right? Controlling cells on which. Okay, hmm, that, that's good. I love that, Caleb. So Caleb is asking a question that shouldn't there be a color code for linked cells uh, on which there's also a formula? Hmm, that's, that's good, right? As I said, you can be flexible and uh, always create as much as you want, but it should not always be too much, right? And, and if need be, you can always come back here and update it, right? So, oh, so can we get this uh, PPT and the Excel file? This Excel file. Uh, for the Excel file, I would have really loved us to watch the video and use it to create it on your own. Yes, uh, the, the best way for you to learn like, financial modeling is when you do it yourself. So that's why I said, I will make the recordings available so that you can check that and use it to build your own from scratch. Yes, but don't copy my own. Your own style could be more you know, better than my own, right? <laughs> okay, so here, let's just call this one glossary. And we can have some things that we, uh, we are going to need under it. So here, let me remove my grid line. I don't like seeing the grid line. So I'm just going to I'll remove that so that it looks more like, like a, a book. Then I can start applying my, my cell styles. So this is the one. Right, and this is heading two. It just kind of kind of look good like that, right? This is part of it. So I just apply that so for this. I also apply that cell star so I've created it. You need to apply it into your model. So 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 at times uh, there might be a need where you need to put this your cell style in your cover page. Yes, so if, if need be as well. I said it depends on you. I could read my template, and then this whole guide is also in the uh, cover page. So it depends on how, how, you, how you want it. Then we have this. So we just kind of look that professionalism just come out from it. So now let's apply everything we created. These are inputs. Manufacturing was typed. Input, Nigeria input, Nera input, Abashon input, Builder uh, input. So uh, model start dates, uh, model forecast 10 years. So we have this as well. So just apply everything that you've uh, created. So now let's look at this. If I want to print this out, to P, uh, let's see how it appears. So you see this. So you can see how this kind of look good, right? Uh, printed on, you can see the date at the time that it was printed, all right? The worksheet name guide and the page number. So. Instead of typing page one of a type page one OG. So let me let me change that. Keep set up, right? And under our header filter. So I can, I can customize the filter and change it back to OF. So control P, and you see it's just print as if it's a book. That, that's a good part of creating, creating that. So let me put this back. And here. Let's call this our input, which will be the next thing that we need to do. So inputs, inputs, and let's extract our model. Now for a typical project finance, right? Um, uh, the structure of your input might be a little bit flexible. Yes, it is allowed. So yes, the standard is saying, yes, your model must have the same structure and beauty. But when it comes to the approach of a typical project of finance, your uh, your art, your input structure might be a little bit dynamic. So we are going to see that. So now I'm going to collapse my first three uh, uh, columns. Now, let me show you why we've created, we are um, collapsing those three columns. So uh, 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 when some people build models, you just see the different uh, worksheets, like you can see 20 or 30 worksheets. A standard is saying that is not a good approach. Instead, uh, anything related to input, let it be in one worksheet. Don't put the new input somewhere, uh, cost input somewhere, work, different worksheets. Just put anything or inputs in one worksheet. You can now use your outline to create a very good uh, professional navigation tool. Now, I'm going to highlight from this my model, heading one down to heading two. I'll go to my data tab, right? My data tab, I have this guy called group. I have on group and I have subtotal. Now I'll click on this group option and I'll click on group. Now it's going to ask me do I want to group row or columns? I want to group rows and I'll click on OK. So immediately I click that, this number will appear, number one and two. If I click on one, look at what happened. Everything I have on that here will be collapsed. 
Let me do the same thing for the second heading. I will write below the second heading and before the next one. Click on my group. It's going to ask me the to group row. And I'll click on OK. Now what happened? It also group everything that I have on that heat. It does not mean there's no data there. Right? If I click on the two, it will open up everything. If I do the same thing for my second heading, for the second one, group, click on OK. It's going to add another number, one, two, three. So let me do the same thing for the second one. Group, OK. The third one, let me group my cell star. Click on my group, I click on my OK. So the third one, because we don't have data yet, you can still leave that. So if I click on two, look at what you have. So it just look good like this. So it's more like you are creating a, a, a book chapter. So this chapter one, model information, then under it, you have this. Now, looking at this, uh, I don't know why Excel has, what well, they've decided to put this. So this is supposed to be on column two on row two, right? Because currently it's here. So to adjust that, this drop down option here, click on it and untick this direction and click on OK so that it just go back to the actual one. So here, if I click on two, it can open everything up. I can collapse it as well. So it's just read more like a book. So that's, that's the usefulness of using that outline in your, in your model. So let's go straight to our model extraction. A model extraction, a model extraction. So here, let me put the company here. Let's put our company here, right? And just make it big, big, a little bit. Then uh, blue color, right? And um, make that book. Then we call this our input, input or, or assumptions, either one. We can put an assumption and more like the same thing. Input or assumptions, you can also put that in red. So we could have done is could have also created a, um, a self style for this one. So this, this one is fine, right? Now here, uh, let's put let's put this our, our descriptions. Let's put this our descriptions, uh, our units, and this our uh, this should be our input as well. So I can put this guy in the uh, in our self styles, which should be the the uh, explanatory. The explanations, right? So we have it like this. So let me remove my grid line. I don't like having this grid line. Uh -huh. Then let me just put my root and my line here. And put it in order. And I put it in order here. And I can see this is my panel. Good. So now let's get started with our. So as I said, this is more like my own approach when I'm building a typical uh, time based model. So here we need our general, first thing we need. So if we look at our um, module, right? We need our general macro economic assumptions. So here, uh, this will be our general and our general and our macro economic, economic assumptions. So put that one here. So I can apply my sales tax for heading one. Right, and the first thing that we need will be uh, general. So we just have our general assumptions. General assumptions. So we're going to have our general assumptions. Uh, let's also look at some other things we're going to have. So I can just create this, create the structure out. Right, so copy this. So we have our general assumption. What other things can we have? Uh, we also have, we're going to have our timing uh, assumptions. Right, and then we then have our uh, macroeconomic assumptions under this. Macroeconomic assumptions under this. All right. So now let's start with some general things that we know can affect the business as a whole, irrespective of the type of business you are you are you are creating, right? So let's look at some general things. So for example, uh, let's look at uh, this uh, in a period. We could also put down another time, but let's let's have it here. Uh, so days in a year. So this. So let's just let us let us keep it uh, simple, right? So let's say uh, 365 days. Right. So uh, by the time you could also create your your dates. So when we create that date, we can also uh, get that. But let's just keep it straight here. Days in a year, then a month in a period, or maybe in a year as well. So months. Maybe there's no way your business can operate more than 12 months. 
So this description, this unit is, is always good. It's not like a good thing that gives description to what you have here, right? So explanation. So month unit. So um, let's say uh, days. So maybe days in a month. So maybe we should put an average. Let's say thirty days, right? But but what, what about operation uh, operating days? Operating days in a month. So you can have a, uh, you can have uh, days, right? You can have your number of days. Then you can have your uh, operating days in a, in a month. And why we doing that? So if you look at uh, under their revenue, right? We told us that they will be selling. Let's see. Okay. So we also need to look at the granularity of the uh, data. So the quantity, right? Uh, they plan to sell. Will it be daily or monthly? What have they given us? Right, so let's look at that. How we generate list of products or power like this? My stats, uh, let's look at this. Already, uh, I think they give us okay, yeah, so 5,000 uh, per, parts per month. Okay, so we have per month. We don't need to necessarily put operation this. We will have months in the period. So any other things we need, you can always bring it. Okay, so let's say a uh, quarter, uh, number of quarter, uh, quarter in a period, quarter in a year. So how many quarters? I think we have four, right? And then month, a month in a quarter, month in a quarter. Okay, so this should be a month, right? This should be okay. This should be a quarter. Then month in a quarter, right? So just trying to. Consistent and this, I think if you have three months in a quarter, simple. Now, for our timing, our timing is very, very important. Very important. So, let me just start some code here. So, for our timing, for timing, number one, we are going to have our uh, at times we call it a financial uh, a financial period, but Let's 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 leave that. Let's just let's start with our construction, our construction period. Right. So we usually call it financial close. Maybe from you getting your uh, having all your documents, approaching your your, uh, your 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 investors, people that want to invest into the I think let's 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 do that. We should, we should do that. So let's call it financial period. I think we, should, we need to consider that. So yes, financial period. Let's say um. Uh, so this is when we believe the project is start. So project start date, right? Um, just copy this format, put it here. And this should be date. So we're saying, hey, if you sell star, so you see the usefulness of that sales style guide. Just automatically you apply it immediately. So uh, let's say this will start. Um, that should be zero one, right? Zero one, twenty twenty three. So. I don't know why my uh, keyboard is acting funny. That's not what I want. Uh, my control shift three seems not to be working. So let me just use, let me use my control one. I don't know why. <laughs> it's actually a new system, so maybe that's why. Uh, keyboard are, are different. Okay, yes, so this starts here. Then uh, let's say, uh, uh, so maybe financial uh, discussion period for them to have their um, so I have the, uh, this agreement and the and do things. So let's put this more like a month. So maybe to take them like um, uh, two. I think two months should be fine, right? So convert that and borrow this and put that in a month. And I just need them to convince their investors and to get the funding and do things. So two months. Then we call this financial. Financial close. So this should be dates. Right. And then that will be, we're going to use our e dates, e dates, right? Start dates, comma, the number of months is two months, close the bracket and press enter. And then we combine these two dates. And then I think I'll need to check my keyboard why the three is not working. Right. So uh, this year that is in full, I think it's fine. Let me remove. Okay, so I think this is good. This is fine. We have it like this. So end it. So I'll put this minus one. 
Today's will give us at the end of February. So start January, January, February. That's two months. I hope I'm correct. Okay, so the next one, we need our, our construction, construction period. We also need our construction period. So construction, our construction starts, starts date. So you could also have some delay uh, period, right? So you've gotten your funding, then maybe it take you a month before you start. But this one, let's just assume you're getting the funding, you are starting the following month, right? So we call this construction, construction period. And construction, construction end period have it like this. So uh, let's just copy, let's copy this. So we can even copy. So let's, let me just copy this and copy the units and I'm going to copy this uh, uh, date format. So our construction date with the best is going to be uh, financial close date plus one. We are zooming here to start the following month. Then the number, the period of construction, let's look at the, what we have in the model and the client gave us that. Right, so the construction period will be 12 months right a year so let's put this as 12 months then we use our e date formula so e date uh, this is my start date comma and my months is months close brackets minus one so that you give me the actual end date right so it means uh it means 24 the date we end in uh, 29th then let's go straight to our operations operation uh, period switch our operational period. So let's get my period very well here. Now also you could also have some delay period, but you could also factor that delay period as part of your construction period. Then we start operation starts, operation starts, start dates, right? Uh, operation, operation period. We are getting our question period. Please, as I said, uh, you can ask as much question uh, if you would like to ask. Then we have our operation, uh, operation and dates. So it's still the same type of things, but the same approach. We put that here. Right? So uh, this one will be our construction and date plus one, which means to have been our operation will start this period. Uh, our operation period is years. Right, so let me put this in years, and this would be uh, 10 years. So control one, I will convert this back to years format, then which means I will need to change this my, my formula here, which means this, this is in years, I want to convert it. E dates usually make use of months. We need to multiply this by our 12 months. So 12 months, we already have our 12 months here. We just already name this and call it, uh, this is our model uh, months. And the name it to model month. Then I'll come down here. I'm saying equal to e date. This is my start date, comma, my operation period, then multiply by that my model month, which is that 12 months, with the brackets minus one. Then we have this. So it means the project will end in our end on 28th February uh, 2034. So any other thing do we need? Okay, so for this, I think we are good on this part of our. Time. We are good on the part of our timing. So please, any question, any question before we continue? Any question? As I said, I just wanted to understand it. Ask as much question as you can ask. All right. Uh, just assume you are you are looking at someone building a model. So what does upstart or uh, why does uh, upstart one year after the construction? So it's not starting one year after the construction. So look at this. So our construction will take us 12 months. And your construction period will end on 29th February 2024. And then your operation period will start. Yeah, so that's that's what we have there. Okay. So then let's go straight to the other. Uh, so we had our general, we have our general assumptions, right? And we also have our timing. We also have our then let's go straight to our general assumption. Now uh, I don't know, I don't usually like this uh, this this line. This is more like a, a print uh, break. So um, I don't usually like it. So I can to remove it, I'll go to my file, my options, then I'll go to my advance. Then when I scroll down, I think it will have it under um, 
So on that display option for this worksheet, and I'll untick it, right? Untick it so I can do okay. So I'll tick that, right? Uh, for the one for guide, I also untick it for the one for the cover, and I'll tick it. I don't like seeing that line. Click on okay, so the line will disappear. It's not like a page break, page break line. So here, let's have uh, some of our macroeconomic assumption here, right? So, uh, so before we even go ahead, uh, let's create more like a date of uh, a date up here. So since we know that our model start date, so equal to, so I can even name this one. Let me call this model start date. So go to my name box and I'll call it model start date. Now come here. Now call this equal to model start date, right minus one. So let me copy this our. Uh, let me format this. I'll format this into our date. Right, so that it looks good. This. Okay. I'm going to copy this so that I'm okay. And I'll be equal to this plus one. Start date. Then my end date will be equal to E date. E date, right? My start date, comma, then my model month. Remember, I've named that my model month. Close so bracket. Minus one. So I have from first to January 23. So and my model we hand how many years? We hand in uh, 34. So let me just drag this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have this will be more than that. So so 34. So I think our model also ends here. That's 34, right? Yeah, 34. Okay, yes, so I just expand this. We get 34. Okay, so then I can, this is my heading uh, that I've created. I can just stretch that, everything capture that. Okay, yes. So we have this. You just, you're having that, and if you press your window P, uh, your control P. You should be able to print that out. Just kind of look good as if you are printing out a, a, a book. Okay. So now let's go straight to our uh, macroeconomic assumptions, right? Macroeconomic assumptions. And the first thing is we need our cost uh, incremental, cost incremental rates. Right, uh, as I said, uh, we assume we have a prior um, uh, financial modeling uh, knowledge. Right, so cost incremental rates, and under that, we're going to factor out our inflation rate. Inflation rate. Now, under this, so inflation rates for this. So I'm going to put the period, so I'm going to call this uh, period one. So I'll just type uh, equal to this plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because all this will be applicable by the time the business starts its operation. So we get so that's why I said your inputs is allowed to be dynamic. So in fact, most times you might not need to even put this here. You just decided to to put that here. But should we really, should we want to remove it, right? So should we remove it? Should we remove it? Okay, let's, let's remove it. Let's remove it so that it does not come, uh, not come in us, right? Okay. So here, let me format this to show more like PDF. So I can just um, like this. Here. Um, then here one. Just format it to show in year one for the respective years. Yes. So for this more than 10. So we need 10 years. So what will be our respective inflation rates? Right for this years, so put this in input and put this in percent. So as I said, we are assuming this is more like a client-based, uh, a client uh, project, right? So which means uh, we, everything needs to be to be to be accurate. So what what I'm going to do now is I'll go straight to my browser. I'll go straight to my browser and I will type uh, Nigeria uh, inflation rates forecast for the next uh, five years. The truth is you can only get uh, up to five years. There's no way you get up to 10 years. 
So uh, I'll think I'll just make use of this at system. It's good as well. Right, so let me assume I'm starting from 2023, so 13.1. Coming here, 13.1. So let me put this in. So whenever you are putting a percent, it's always good to add one decimal at the back of it. So you get to 11.6, 11.6. And also remember, uh, this is more like input. 11.5 can always be updated. Right, we have four, 11.5. And then here, same thing, 11.5. I'll come to 11.5. <laughs> let's, let's just keep it as, at that, All right? Um, and it's always good you put your source of data. So I'll copy this, come back to my model. Under this inflation rates, right click, and I will add new notes. So I'll just put source in here, and I'll just paste the, the link. Right, so uh, most times, uh, yes, you can put it by the side, but by the time you are printing it, you might just enlarge the, the, the worksheet. So I usually like having it like this. Okay, so we have this now. The next one, which is, this is our cost incremental rate, right? So uh, this year, I need to put it up here so that we can manage our space. It's plus one. Manage our space. Let me put a border below it. Oops, like this. Okay. So for our pricing rate, our pricing rate. So I can just copy this percent. I'll put it here. So here. Uh, let me put it like this. Below there. So let me put it here. So here I'm saying my pricing or my pricing, my pricing rates. So for now, what I'm what, we are, what I'm going to do, right? This is my model, is I'm going to keep everything. Uh, let's assume we are keeping our pricing uh, constant for the period. So by the time we are done with the model, right? So we then we can come back and start doing some updates, right? But for now, the pricing. Let's assume we are going to keep our pricing constant for the year. But the truth is this: uh, yes, uh, inflation increases, but at times you don't just get to increase your your product pricing of the same rate at which inflation is increasing. Right, but, but because you need to consider some other thing, your computer, your computer is still selling in the same thing, the cost seems to be increasing, right? Uh, definitely there will be some uh, reflex on your pricing. So uh, I usually use um, one approach, right? Number one, I'll put it like this, build the model. And uh, what, one thing I usually tell my clients is, hey, the first model will be a draft and it's just for, for us to be able to agree on some of the assumptions. So you feel, oh, maybe client can see maybe every two, three years can be increasing the uh, pricing by 5%. Then you know, all they need to do is so year two, year three, they will increase, year two, they will increase the pricing, year four, they will increase the pricing as well. But most of them, I usually keep it constant, which is number one approach. Keep it constant, right? By the time you and your client is having that discussion, you can know, so what do you think? Do you think you'll be Increasing the pricing by this or so, so and all those those related things. So right, okay. No, I think I think I have a suggestion. So this one we can even put it up here. Yeah. So I think it should, should be good if it's, if it's sitting up here instead of this. So instead of this. So I just scrolling down. We can always see that. And always see that. Okay. Why is this? Let me just write coming from. So let me from that. Okay. Let's make it look good. Let's make it look good, right? So I can just put some faded um, blue color here. Right, so it's looking good like that. So I can clear up the other space. This other one that we created here. Hmm. It looks good like this. I think I like this. <laughs> I think I like this. So you're allowed to be, to be creative when you are when you are doing your own other set. So here, so that's one approach. Now the second approach is this. So you can also always build scenario around it as well. So now let's look at this other approach. And, and this one thing I want you to also know, uh, it might make sense to A, it might not make sense to B. So it, it depends on, on, on your approach. So another approach you're saying, okay, yes, if inflation is increasing, uh, the truth is uh, this inflation that we have here is yearly. And we're going to build our model out monthly. 
right? So basically, we are saying, hey, all our cost in year one will be affected by this 13.1. We're saying, hey, our pricing will be constant. Yes, we know that we cannot increase it to the same rate, right? Uh, and at times when costs increase, it usually takes a, a, some certain time before price will also go up as such. So another approach I usually use, as I said, uh, right, it might not be 100% correct, but I usually use that as more like a, so if your client say, look, I'm not sure I can get that, and you just saying, hey, cost is increasing, pricing must also increase. Then what I usually do is this, I will divide this by four, which represent the quarter. So I'm saying, oh, if cost is increasing, yes, we are not going to increase it immediately, but to take us something like a quarter period, so I'm saying equal to this inflation that I have here, right, multiply by open my brackets, one divided by my what? My quarter period, which I have up here. Where's our quarter period? So divided by this, our quarter, our quarter, our number of quarter in a month, right? Keep that constant, close the bracket and press enter. So this just give us an uh, idea of what? Just give us a rate at which our pricing can grow. So now let me ask us, which one do you prefer to the two? approach or if you have any other approach you can also share that with us as i said and this is more like a, a, a knowledge sharing it's not like a training so what approach do you usually use for your own pricing rate why are you, are you going to do that i say no what are you saying is not here i say it's not here you're not giving me no, my document um, so Dix, uh, we could hear you <laughs> all right so anyone want to share what's your own approach or which approach do you prefer it's more like a, a knowledge sharing se session so you prefer the quarter approach, okay? Thank you for that. To anyone, anyone, and always remember when you build model, you must always have be ready to defend it. Uh, why you've done it this way? Does it make sense? Does it not make sense? And be okay. So most times, our uh, inflation rates has been, uh, I think, uh, you know, company release their report quarterly uh, of a thing, right? So we also use that to back up. You know, the truth is, uh, it, yes, it might make sense to A, it might not make sense to B. So at least you have a base. You have any other approach? Anyone? Anyone? As I said this is more like a knowledge sharing. It's not like a, a teacher to student thing. If anyone wants to share with us, you can omit your mic. You can type in the chat box. Okay. So I think also using average. Okay. I think also using the average annual price increase in that industry. Hmm. That that's a good one, right? Uh, but, you know that that might take us a lot a lot of time because the truth is. Yes, historical performance is good, but historical performance is not enough to give us, uh, to make 100% uh, decision into the future. Okay, yes, Olato, do you want to give us an insight? Okay, all right, Olato. Now, can you unmute your mic? Olato is up. Olato, share with us, what's your own approach? For me, I think that approach is okay. Okay, the quarterly one. I right? mean, the quarterly approach. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So somewhere. So yes. So which means we need to go and track the prices over historical period, and and you know you need to go online. You might not even have access to some of those data. Look for the likely company. Understand the deal. That that might be stressful, right? So as I said, uh, most times your first model should be a draft because the truth is you cannot be hundred percent accurate. So they should not assume you are a magician. So, but be able to, um, if that's when you are giving that explanation, you should be able to, to lay it out very, 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 uh, very well. So that's for pricing. Then let's look at our, uh, then government also need to come into play, right? Uh, we need to have our tax rates. So for this one, um, because most time when it comes to project finance, uh, the uh, our tax computation at times can be, can be interesting. Well, let's let's take a look at how we can do that. So, right? but let's just have provision for, for tax rates, right? Provision for tax rates, and it's always good as well. So anything they see like this, if you assume it is annual, so for our tax rates, um, currently now, provision for tax rates for this. Let's just make it thirty two percent for now. We said we can always update this. Now the next one is also our. Uh, assets. We have our. We need to have our assets also. And for the assets, we have something called maintainable, uh, maintainable, right? Maintainable, maintainable capex, maintainable capex. 
right? And we also have incrementer. Uh, so we have our incrementer, incrementer capex. I usually, I don't know why, I like putting it under this, under macroeconomic assumption, right? And let's have our, uh, our assets uh, lifespan here. I usually like putting it here. <laughs> All right, it's more like my own approach. So um, this should be here. So let me change my assets. Okay, now for this, I'll just put this under input. Our asset lifespan definitely, this has been 10 years based on our model, All right? Then now you know, we need to have a maintainable capex. So yes, hey, very good. So someone made a uh, comment the other time that what if you have uh, a link cell style that contain formula and the whole thing. So, we also need to include that. For example, this is our pricing rate. It's actually a formula, but it can also be updated. So which means it's a formula cell, but it can still be updated. So which means we might need to create a different cell style for that. So let's go back to our cell style. Let's go back to our cell style, right? And I'm going to create it under this. And I'm going to call this uh, a formula, formula, right? I'm going to call this formula input, formula input cell, input cells. So we are more like cells. Yes, um, I'm, I might even copy this. So let's, I will duplicate this my input, modify it, format it. So the font, instead of being blue, I think I would just like to make this uh, a black one or something ash, deep ash. Click on OK, OK, then I can apply. Oh, OK, so I've adjusted the previous one. So let me do that again. I will need to right click and duplicate it first. Hmm. So I'll call it input two. Input, maybe I can even call it input formula. Input formula, I put my format, then the color, I might need to change it to something ash. OK, and OK, so that is different from that one. So input formula. So I think for number, I will show us like this. We did not fit the DOI. Click on that. Let me undo. Let me go back. Right click. Um, duplicate. Okay, we don't need general. That's why it's just something like that. So formula, format. Then I just need to change the font to something of the hash. Okay, okay. So this time you already existed. Okay, we've created it before, so I'll just modify it from here. Modify, take the number. <laughs> okay, then I can apply it here. Into the formula. So it looks like this. So um, we just put our description right. So uh, data gotten, gotten uh, from formula, uh, but can be can be uh, uh, changed yeah, so that we. We have that, it's always good. So let me change it back, let me change this one. So that we know that yes, one can always change this and update it. So now our maintainable capex. Our maintainable capex, right? Our maintainable capex will be a factor of our, so, so what basically maintainable capex is saying is this, uh, and, and it's also applied to a normal uh, typical business. Yes, we know the asset depreciates, but if we take a look at a typical corporate uh, organization, you go to their balance sheet to look at their property plant and equipment. We always notice that most times it does not decrease as expected. In other words, which means if you have one, if you have a, an asset and the asset is A, like, let me let me use a very good example that I usually use. So you have a personal car and the job of the work of that car is to take it from your home to your office, your office back home, right? Which means what the position is saying, if one of the four tires, right, got spot, what you need to do is to what? go to the market, get a new tire and fix it. Because if you cannot do that, then the car will just be there. I will not be able to do what you need it to do. The same thing also applies to assets. So which means the, we are saying the money that you've taken in getting another asset, in getting that tire fixed, which is the whole concept of depreciation, we assume that, yes, we can say that is more like the maintainable capex, what it has cost you in keeping that asset. And as such, yes, I can't I say this asset will be depreciated over five years, but it does not mean the asset is depreciating, you are not maintaining it. You have an uh, office chair 
something happened to the handle. You call the mechanic, the carpenter guy that, hey, guy, let me fix this. Which means the assets after the end of the year five can still be useful. Right? And a typical business, you have an operating asset, it's not as if you will be selling it off anyhow. So that same concept is also what we are going to apply in our assets. The assets will be depreciated, but we always make a provision in making sure that the asset is in its best shape so that it can keep producing the unit that we want. So for this, I'm going to put this, right? And most times we usually put it as a multiple. And what we usually do is this, because yes, truly we cannot be 100% accurate. Let me adjust my panel, yes. Really, we cannot be 100% accurate. So what I'm going to do is this. Uh, I'm going to put this, so I'm going to put this in a multiple format, right? Uh, by the time we are doing the calculation, uh, we understand it better. I'll put this as 1.5 for now. Uh, let me format it. So let me create a cell style for our multiple cell style. So new cell style, right? I only need the number. So I don't need this other one. Format it for a normal number. So I'll put, I just open a double quote. I'll put X at the back. So let me, let's make it two. Uh, let's make it a uh, two decimal, right at the back. So let me also do for the negative one. Yeah. Click on OK. So I call this multiple cell styles. So multiple cell. Multiple is okay. We just put that as multiple. Then I can apply it to this for multiple so that it looks like this. Right, so this is more like the costs to say, hey, the assets got depreciated by 5,000 previous period. And we're saying, hey, our revenue is still growing. That means we've incurred uh, more like an expense that is almost equal to the amount it got depreciated. And that's why we are still keeping that asset up. So for this one, let's just keep it as um, 1.5 is good. We can always update that and adjust that by the time we are doing our calculation. Incremental capex, so that will just be in our normal. Let me put our, let me, this is our currency. I'm going to name it, call it model currency. So model currency. So I can always cross to it. So model, I tell you to model currency. So I always give that. I just make this blank. In case they want to add, so maybe in year four, maybe, maybe every five years, uh, they will need to be incurring uh, another specific capex, maybe 5 million. Right, all they need to do is to come here and put the five million and it will flow into the model. So flexible, think uh, this is normal way your client will also do your user will also be thinking. So that's the part on the assets that we've created. So which means we are done with this, we are done with our part, which is the what the map the general and macroeconomic assumptions. You can see that this, this can be this can be a, a whole lot of work, right? <laughs> so please do you have any question before we go straight to the next thing. Any question, any question on what we've done so far? Is it making sense? Is it making sense? You can type in the chat box. You can also unmute your mic in case you have any contribution. Any contribution, any contribution, any question before we go straight to the next thing? Okay, so please, why is the financial period two years? So we are saying uh, two months. Okay, maybe you missed out that part. So we are saying uh, it's part of a typical normal project, right? We, said we are using a, a project finance approach, not a normal uh, uh, business uh, normal model, right? So when, when you're starting your business, you create your business plan, your documentation, right? So as at that period, we assume, yes, the project has started. So um, you see model start period, Financial period is those period that uh, you put all your documents together, right? And you take that to your investors. Uh, they're trying to, you're trying to get the funding. So this is more like the, the funding period. So the period it takes you to get the funding, you're going up and down, meeting with investors, presenting your model, uh, them doing the updates, agreeing on the whole thing, the lawyer signing and this. So, so let's assume that can take two months. For some projects, it might even take three months or six months. Yeah, that's the truth about it. Because 
the, the funding is, is kind of huge, definitely, my leader. So please, can you shed more light on the maintainable capital? So I think when we are doing the calculation, yes, uh, I, will also, I will also repeat some of the things that I've said. Right, okay, now, now that I've created this, the next thing, based on our structure, remember the structure we are using? So we've been able to create, we've created our general macroeconomic assumption. So the next one is our financing assumption. So uh, I'll go ahead, so let me work smart. So I can just copy this to heading. Come down here and let me put it. So our standard is saying, whenever you are building your model, all your input should always be in one worksheet. You don't need to create a uh, um, financing assumption in different worksheets, uh, general macro assumption one worksheet, Operating assumption, different worksheets. Can I say keep it all in one worksheet so that it's the users they know that oh, I only need to do all my updates first in one worksheet and the model automatically updates. So this one will be our funding, funding, right? Funding assumptions. Yeah, we're going to call this. Uh, let's call this our sources of funding. Right, I will just copy this guy, put it here, and I'll call this our use of funds so that we can have both of them together. Now, let's look at our, our client's brief, our client's brief. Client brief. So how much investment do you want to raise? Let's look at that. So um, let's call this investment. Maybe if I do this, investment so at times you might need to it might be the other way around so we said this is just to give us a, a basic uh, uh understanding of it right so um we we'll use do we use this approach okay no let's let's use the other approach so here let's call this one our loans and let's call this our equity and then let's just put the percent here by the time we do our calculation we'll be able to get that and be accurate all right. So uh, then the loan is what? The loan is 70%. 70%. And our equity will be 30%. Straightforward, right? Then let's have our cost of funding. Our cost of funding. Our cost of financing. That, that was. So for our loans, let's look at our loans. So they're telling us. A loan, what is the year of the loan uh, inflow? So the loan period, the loan starts, right? Uh, let's call this a uh, loan inflow period. Loan inflow period, uh, definitely that will also be dates. So this one, let's assume, let's assume to be the same thing with our construction dates. Let's assume to, to, to not like this, uh, for input, right? Um, was our construction date. So let's assume it will be the same thing as I said. It's an input, we can always update it. 01 March 3. So 01. So 01 uh, March 23. Okay. Don't, that's our loan inflow period. And they said the loan period will be for, the loan period will be for five years. So our loan period to be in years, right? Yes, and uh, we have our moratorium period. Moratorium period to also be in years. So I think we have a year format that we created up here. So I'll just copy this, put it here. So our loan period, the same is five years. So them since when you are done with the model, you tell them that no, five years might be, maybe you need to uh, ask for um, for that years, right? So five years, so what's our interest rate? Interest rate, let me just copy this format here. I'll put it here, so it said the interest rate is what? 15.5, uh, 15.5 cents per annum. Yeah, what other thing do we need? What other thing? So our dividend payout ratio is 40%. So dividend, dividend payout ratio is what? That's 40%. So 
of percent. So another thing, we need another thing. Things are good. So in case we need other assumptions, we can always uh, include it when we uh, get started. So the next one, are they plan to make use of the funding? Are they plan to make use of the funding? So business registration. So I can let me split my screen into two so that I can also work smart. So looking at that, and I'm also putting it here. So business registration. So let me call this registration. Right handle business registration and licensing. And licensing. So that will be our NERA. Right. What other thing do we need? So we need our assets. What are the assets? We are going to have our plant, plant and equipment. So the plant equipment and equipment. Our plant, plant and equipment. So at times there might be a need for you to list out uh, the line items just for this one, right? Just decide to sum everything up like this. So this is one million, three, one, two, three. Then for our factory, the same that will be 80 million. Then uh, we're going to have furnitures, furniture and fittings, right? And the same that will cost like 20 million. So which other one? Then we're going to have vehicle. Vehicles and other assets. So that will cost how much? Vehicle and other assets, 15 million. Okay, then we need our inventory. So more like raw materials that they are going to get right. So uh, let's just call this normal, let's call it maybe stock. Our stock and raw material. And how much? Money, how much? So that will be 50 million. Then which other one? Then awareness. Awareness. Yes. Maybe so let's remove this place. Because it's written, it's written in headings already. So awareness. And so we have the marketing uh, and advertising. And what are they saying? So they said you spent 10 million, 10 million on that. All right, then other one, then let's call this prepared. And okay, let's call this our operating, our operating costs, which they are saying is our working cash. So working cash. So for the working cash, let's make it dynamic. So let's call this the working cash. They're saying that they're going to spend how much? So 24 million. So we need to sum that. So, so the total use of funds, the total use of funds, total use of funds will then be, so we need to do it in our total format. Let's do it in our total format. I'll just sum everything up here. Sum everything up here. And here we have it as a 200 a million dollars, right? So now, uh, one good thing about this is this. Um, because some of these costs will be incurred uh, in different phases, right? Do you understand that? So maybe oh, in year one, so maybe oh, period one, uh, which will be more like phase one, these are what they are buying, and phase two, these are more like what they are buying. So it's, it's something you also have that as well. So in other words, which means the funding, all the funding might not come in at once. The financial institution might just be uh, uh, releasing the money as they need it. So which means they usually our face at uh, different faces. So maybe, oh, by the time you are starting your business operation, that's when you spend this. Uh, in this, this period, that's when you are going to spend this. So I think let's, let's look for a way we can also factor that in. So uh, here, I'm going to put, I'll type equal to, equal to year, right? Let me extract the year of the construction. So years for the construction. So this is when construction is starting. Put the year here. 
right? So let me put this into general. I don't know, my Excel button is acting funny. Uh, uh, then I can use some shortcuts. <laughs> I'm trying to fix that up later, all right? So then the second one, uh, the second will then be equal to a year when the business is start, when the operation starts, right? So this is when the operation starts, press enter, right? And here we're just trying to make provision uh, or how they will expand the, the funding. So business registration, we know that 100% of it will be spent in during the construction period. So let me copy this. So these are more like they said, it's more like the reality part of it. So here, I just copy that format and put it there. So 100% will be spent in year 2023. Then factory, I think 100% should be spent during the construction period, furnitures and fittings. So maybe you set up everything and maybe 2024. So you can say maybe they will spend 80% or 50% here and 50% here. So you could have different faces. You need to also factor that in your model. So vehicles and other assets. So this one, you could assume everything in 2023 or you could assume it will come in at the start. Which one should we use? Should you assume, should we spread? So we are saying, hey, everything in 2023, that is the construction period, spread. Okay, I think that, let's, let's use that approach, yes, when we get to the calculation. So very cool, definitely, I feel 100% should be spent when the business, when the operation is starting, right? Adela, any contribution? The mic is open. So stop, raw material, definitely, I feel 100% when the operation is starting. Marketing, also 100% when the business is starting and working cash 100% as well. So factory plant and equipment, or maybe you should just make that one, uh, maybe 80 here and 20 here. So you are, you are just laying out how the form would be used and released. The truth is, yes, uh, you're going to get uh, 50, you're going to get 100 million, but it might be like they might not just release everything uh, at once. So they, oh, what's, how, how do you plan to make it? Uh, maybe the one, uh, what we are doing in phase one, we are trying to uh, build out the foundation, do this, do that, and, and all those things. So it's, the story must flow. And that's, that's, that's what makes uh, the project finance uh, dynamic as well. So it means hey, this 100%, in this first period, then another percent just you should be able to lay this, this out as well. Right? Does it make sense? What do you think? What do you think about this approach? So we, 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 we usually use this very well when you are building your project finance, right? Especially for some uh, infrastructure um, related, related uh, projects. Okay, so that's our use of funds, which we've gotten, right? Uh, so let's look at our, so financing, we've listed our capex and our use of funds. So I think we can, as I said, yes, just understand this more like the typical flow approach, uh, but it does not mean, yes, by fire, by force, you must follow this. So let's go straight to the business operations. So as I said, I can just, let's make use of our, our outline. Let me make use of my outline. So another shortcut you can use, I'll come under my general, but to shift down arrow, then up arrow, so that I created more space, then my keyboard, shift, alt, right arrow, enter so that I can just create that outline. Do the same thing. Do the same thing. So that I can see, to see how this will look. It's going to make sense, trust me. Just make your model uh, look very, very professional. So if I come back here, if I click on my one, see everything I have here just collapse. Okay, we've not done this. Let's do for this, let me open it again. Uh, again for the next one. So I can just copy this, these two guys. So we don't work this way. We just work This outline can be funny at times, so you really need to be <laughs> very, very careful. Let me go back to my data down here. I'll take these two guys so that the right arrow is in. So this one is working fine. And the one is working fine. So why is this one not working? Okay, okay, okay. That's for the new one that we created. That's okay. So I think it's working. So this one should be for our operation. Our 
notification uh, assumptions. All right, so this one is not revenue. Revenue out. Okay, so I think it's something from season six. It just look more like a, a chapter. So now, on the part of our operations, let's look at what we have from our, our clients. So let me also split my screen into two. Put your shift, uh, use your window right arrow to make it the same in all sides. Now, on the part of the business operations, let's look at the revenue. The revenue. Please, as I said, in case you have any question, need further clarification, you can always ask. So, okay, so let's look at our product price. Product, so our product, our product price, right? And uh, what are we selling? So, LB, so let me zoom out on that part. Okay, yes, so we're selling LB, LB tools, all right? What's the what's the size? If it, let's leave the price. So, so let's say um, so I'm going to use um, a model currency and um, just concatenate it with a uh, pack. Like now an interest time and the inputs. So we'll be selling that at what one thousand eight fifty. Enter. That's what we have for the price. Then uh, to our product cost, we have a price for our product cost. Product cost. So when you are creating your inputs, it must be well explanatory, well structured, right? Always remember that. So what are our costs? So we have our raw materials. Raw materials. We have our packaging costs. Uh, we have our utility. Right, so we also have our other direct, other direct cost. So let me also borrow this. Let me just, yes, let me copy this format across. So here, raw material, so that will cost 700 per pack or zero. Our packaging, 150. Utility, 250. Other direct cost, 150. So we have that. Then on the part of the quantity, Quantity. So for our quantity, uh, the set. Uh, so let me just let me also let me just. Uh, I don't want to type again. I'll just uh, ref uh, reference what I typed earlier. And then this would be pack, pack per month. So this is pack per month. So let me just copy this format. Yeah, yeah. Input. I said they be selling. Uh, 5,000 5, packs per month. Now, uh, we've forgotten to add our quantity in our macroeconomic assumption. So let me come back here. And let me create another space here. I'm going to call this our, we're going to call this our quantity, our quantity uh, growth factor. Right, so this will be quantity, quantity growth. So I think since our model will be forecasted monthly, so this should be percent per month. So for now, you know, we're just going to keep this as, let's say, 2.5 percent. Yes, for now, for now. So let me put this in our normal input here. Right? For now, we still come back to it. We still come back to it. So there are some assumptions that you might not be 100 percent accurate. Right, we said most times you might need to run it with your client. Hey. Average month on month. I'm saying maybe 2.5. Do you think the business can do more than that or so? so? Yes, you can go to use the industry and, and the other thing as well. But we'll come back to that when we be done with the model. So quantity, then remember, the client said what, which is very, very important. Capacity production per month. So here we're going to call this capacity or capacity, capacity production. Right, and I'll just reference it, reference our product. So, um, which is more like the average pack that can be produced monthly. Right, I'm going to call this pack. 
now of, of, for the purpose of flexibility, I'm going to put it for the 10 years from here. And what's our capability? What's our capacity? That's 8,000. So what I'm going to do is I'll keep this at 8,000, right? So in case they might want to increase their capacity going forward, so they can change it here. And that cost can also include the cost of increasing the capacity under this incremental capex here. It must flow together, right? That's the old story and the old structure. So for this, that's what we have under this. So the next one, I think we are done with our everything under revenue. Do you have anything else? Any other thing? Any other thing? Any other thing? Any other thing? Any other thing that we need to consider under our revenue and cost? Guys, we are doing this together. <laughs> doing this together. I'm just leading. Any other thing that we need to include? Are we good? Are we good with the revenue from the business, from the client B? You can type in the chat box, but I'm sure we are still together. Yes, other direct costs, we've included it. We've included it, included it here, other direct costs. Other direct costs. So yes, I think so the next one should be our operational cost. So come down here, put it here. I will call this uh, operational, operational cost. Right, and let me split my screen to two again. I'll look at that from our clients. So number one, we need our salaries. So let's look at this. So they've given us number of staff that they need. So I think that should be the first thing. Our salary. We start our salary. So here, the same manager. So let's say, um, let's even we'll call this our uh, Okay, salary, then we call this one head count. Head count, so we're going to have a manager. Manager, right, uh, financial, financial controller. Controller and the sales and marketing team. Sales. Sales and marketing team. Right, uh, operational, uh, operations. This operational and admin staff. And factory, factory workers, then the set to have some other staff as well. So you can always you can also uh, advise the client that oh, if you they might need this uh, this job role, this and that, this and that. You said you are not just a modeler, so it's way beyond the, the model you are building. You're also a financial advisor. So always remember that. So here I'm also going to make this flexible. Right, so I'll put it under the respective year. So in case they want to increase the number of staff, it's easy for them to increase it in the respective years. So financial controller, supervisor two. Okay, so we need to create for supervisor. So they put it together, supervisor, right? So financial controller one, supervisor one, sales and marketing five, uh, operational, operations and Operations and admin of five, factory workers of 10, then other staff. So this can always be, as I said, yes, it's normal for clients to give you just any uh, data and you think, but by the time you are done with the model, because that's what makes it a model, you can always say, hey, at least your cost is, is way too small. It's not just realistic and, and those kind of things. But by that time, uh, you are sitting with, the mode, with your clients, you have your model built out completely. And all they need to do is to just come to the inputs, make adjustments, make uh, they make updates to the inputs, and your model automatically updates on its own. So that's for the head count. Now, uh, let's check the salary per head. The salary per head as well. So I can just link it. So let me just type it again. Go to the manager. Let's link that to other staff. So let's let me copy. Let me make smart here. Okay, so I think I have a currency that we use for the currency per pack. And I can just change the pack to, to month. So salary is being paid monthly. So salary is being paid monthly for the respective period. I put this in inputs such that they can always update the salary for each respective year. 500,000 a month. Right. 
Okay, Shayi, we can see your face. <laughs> so, right, uh, the financial controller, 400 each. Yes, Shayi, you are seeing your face. <laughs> you look good, you look great. Still at work, right? Sales and marketing, uh, 250K per head. Then operations, uh, just 200K per head as well. Our factory, that's 50,000. And our other staff, 30,000. And so, I said they're also financial advisor. You can always uh, advise them. So now, this is for the respective. This is more like for a year one. The average monthly salary will be five hundred k. We are still going to factor in the inflation of the thing. Yes, don't don't that one will be done by doing the application. And one and one the other thing you can do. So this is more like approach one. The other approach, which I usually use, is this. Right? Yes. Uh, Inflation is going to cater for time value of money and you think. So it would also include uh, salary, the salary uh, incremental, incremental rate here. So when you are building, just think about the flexibility of your of your users, right? Things they might want to do. So I'll put this as a percent. So that's one approach. So I usually use this approach as well. So they could say, oh, maybe every two, two years they'll be increasing their salary by 5% or something. So I'll set this as zero. You know, everything here was adequate. So I will reduce this and put equal to the salary for base one, multiply by my bracket one plus. Then I will reference this uh, salary incremental growth factor that I've created here. Enter. So I'll be doing it for year one. So, so okay, so maybe every three years, year three, we might increase it. Maybe if they just come here every three, three years, maybe 5% it's increased, come here again. All right, five percent, and that one just update. So this one is different from the effect of inflation. Inflation is just saying, hey, you want to spend five hundred thousand the next five years, it might cost you more than that five hundred. So that's what that is saying. But this one is just their own expected increase. But for now, we keep that at zero percent. Factory workers should be fifty thousand. Oh, okay, okay, great. Thank you for that. <laughs> Very good, no? thank you for that. Okay, all right. So we've listed this out, then I think the next one will now be the, uh, the operating, the operating expenses. Expenses. So the operating expenses, let's look at what we have. Operating expenses, hello. What do we, okay, yes, great. So we have the utilities. Uh, uh, enemy of doesn't want factory workers. <laughs> so he said, he said you don't want the factory workers to earn more. And be. <laughs> so utilities, uh, office, office supplies. <laughs> no, we, we could start to increase it. That, that's that's one of the advantage of model. Okay, so can we increase our salary? We think, we think we can actually absorb that and do it. So maintenance, uh, logistics, then other costs as well. So this will also be a month. So we can also do, we can also use the same approach of you maybe general increase, uh, increase in the, so I'll just borrow, let's borrow this, this guy because we've done here. And I'll put it here. So maybe uh, OPEX, OPEX incremental. So we can also do the same thing here. This will be generic. So let me, let's follow our format that we've been doing. Remember that. So here, here, then I'll put it in that, our, our input formula self. <laughs> so it's always good. So PISA, what exact function do you use to automate the calculation you did using the incrementer? Is the, no, it's just cell referencing. So I'm going to do it again, don't worry. Just a reference. It's, it's nothing. It's not. There's no magic there. <laughs> All right. So let's look at the cost. Let me look at the cost. So utilities two fifty monthly. All right. Office supplies five hundred. Uh, maintenance three hundred. Logistic two hundred. And other costs two hundred. Enter. So I'll just copy, let me just copy this format. 
test it in a bit. So this is the formula equal to your last year multiplied by my bracket one plus my growth rate, which I'm going to keep the row constant. So referencing, enter, I can drag it for the five years. Yes. And then you know, we have our respective operational cost for the respective period. Now, the last but not the least, I think we need our operating working capital, operating working uh, capital and items. So our WC. So to form part of our balance sheet. All right. Um, then we need our inventory days. Inventory days. Uh, trade receivables days. Receivable days. Okay. Do we need to do we need to put this? Do we need to even put this? Let's put just inventories. Inventories. Uh, trade. Receivables, right? Uh, I think we can have the payment as well. So just use our normal uh, capital uh, assumptions, right? So any inventory we have should be able to sell it within number of days. So any stock that we have in our, in our store, we should be able to sell it maybe within 20 days, be able to get it out. 20 days is not too long, considering uh, it's more like a beverage. So let's say 20 days. Our receivables maybe we give you a good which will be able to pay us within 25 days. Repayment always more like 30 days ahead. Right? And then we have our so maybe we should just even call this so that we know that this is this is our current asset. So all these current assets. Then our current liabilities. Current liabilities. We are going to have our, our trade tables. Shayi, Shayi is going on. You're on your way home. Well done. I think yeah, this should be the closing time. Uh, my yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> well done. Shayi, remember to switch up your video. You can see the sky. So our trade tables, uh, our class, right? And other tables. Let's, let's put them together. Our tables. Then I also apply that same days of 18 concept. The trade tables, anybody, uh, any of our suppliers, let's say we should be able to pay within 30 days. Uh, any expenses should be accrued over maybe 30 days as well. Right, so that we don't have the same number. So now we've created our input worksheets. And let me also use that our outline that everything is looking good, everything is looking very, very nice. Everything is looking good, everything is looking nice. So here, the part of the revenue, like this, so do the same thing. Then I have this, then I can use my outline. So you see how this look, just simple and professional, right? Simple and professional, you have a general funding and the operations, you click on the two, it opens up the second edit, then three, Opens everything out. So before we wrap up the session, before we wrap up the session, right? Uh, let's just create our. So let me create. Let's create our calculation or templates. Well, should we do that tomorrow? 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 I think I will see the mistake I made. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is let me just let me duplicate this input. Right. Let me create this input. I'm going to call this calculations. So I'm going to delete everything that we have from up here to the end. So delete everything here. All right, so that so yes, we still have this, right? So just to create the structure of our calculations, so we create the structure of our calculations, uh, which will be done monthly, right? And then we get started with our calculation tomorrow. So a uh, big thanks to everyone that have joined us today. As I said, I'll, I'll make sure immediately we are done with this session and the recording finish processing. Uh, I will upload it straight into my YouTube channel. So uh, you can check my YouTube channel out, right? And be uh, on the watch. So let me see um, the YouTube channel so that we can check that. Just search for my name, search for my name. I'll let me share that in the link. I'm going to share that with us. So. And you can uh, check that as well. So my channel. So 
you can see different stuff there as well that you can leverage on in some previous session that we also had and also uh, check that out. So let me share that in the chat box to everyone so that we can see and look. So we'll be having the same session um, same time tomorrow, all right? And I also share the link uh, with everyone. So we continue, I think three days we should be, we should be good with, with, with this. Right, we should be good with this. So big thanks to everyone who that join us outside Nigeria. And I know that your timing might be different than the old thing. So we say very big thanks to you. And I hope you enjoyed what you've done today. You've also uh, gained one or two things as well, right? So see you at the same time tomorrow. Uh, we'll continue uh, from where we stop. Okay, okay, so- uh, yeah, Hello, Victor. Yes. One, one second. Yeah. Uh, I I joined later. Uh, sorry, okay. I wanted to find out the PDF you were using. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you shared it. I saw some PDF. Yeah, yeah so, this one. So after, yeah, so after you registered, right? Part of yes. your confirmation email. Uh, this work brief was shared with us. This is the client work. Okay, brief. all right. Okay, that's fine. That's I'll check it out. Confirmation. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank so, you. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Uh, we appreciate our commitment some of us that we are, are joining outside um, my current uh, location our timing different our timing is, is different so thank you everyone and i hope you gain one or two things right tomorrow be very very interesting trust me uh, that's where we start in the model kit now that we have all the assumptions so thank you everyone and make sure you enjoy the rest of your evening rest of your day right as well so thank you everyone and bye for now. In case you have any question, I'll just stay back maybe one or two minutes before we close the session. Once again, a big thanks to everyone of us. Hmm. Someone is saying I should send the Excel file. I don't want to send it because I actually want us to get to do it ourselves, right? It's, it's easy to see someone doing it and you, you understand it and, and the whole thing, but it will, it will be better if you just look at check the recording and and what and go ahead and build your and, and use it to create your own you and be creative with your own and the whole thing right you know normally what i should have done is i'll ask you to create your own and we'll use that as entry into the session tomorrow but yeah and you can always go back to the recording right so see everyone tomorrow the same time and bye for now you okay, want to see if you can proceed. No, I guess use the recording. <laughs> use the recording, build your own. Right? Build, build your own. Yes. Well done, everyone, and thank you so much. So for the recording, as I said, go to my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search for Victor Gundele. Then I'm going to upload that immediately. Yes, after we are done with the session. Okay, all right, and I hope, okay, so I hope we recorded the session. <laughs> okay.